Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing my top 10 favorite eyeshadow palettes so far in 2021. We still have the other half of the year to go, but so far these are the top 10 that I have been loving and using consistently. So if you want to see what they are, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing with us with you guys. And if you're new to my channel, eyeshadow palettes, I don't want to be too fooling myself when I say this, but they are my specialty. And this video stressed me out. If you would like to see my favorite products in makeup, for 2021 so far. I have a whole other video dedicated to all of the other products besides eyeshadow palettes and I definitely recommend checking that out because as I was looking over my list of all of the palettes that I tried in 2021, I realized this year was a complexion year. I thought that it was going to be a huge challenge to do this video but what I actually discovered was that the eyeshadow palette was the easier portion. I still was struggling because I'm indecisive and I love all of my eyeshadow palettes but all of the good eyeshadow palettes I could think of actually had come out at the end of 2020. So, so far these first six months of the year there's been some good launches but not a lot of bangers, not a lot of the top 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 if I'm being honest. So I'm interested to see how the latter six months work because normally I feel like the best palettes do come out towards the holiday season so I think it might change but so far I mean I'll be honest I was a little bit underwhelmed I'm surprised at my picks and that's how it turned out but I have a running list of all of the palettes that I've tried I do a monthly palette rankings and a lot of the palettes that came out while they're very good they just you know they weren't top 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 so anyways I picked these palettes based on how often I use them and how inspiring they were to be and if they incorporated themselves into not my everyday makeup routine because when it comes to eyeshadow I do not have an everyday makeup routine but if I found myself wanting to reach for them is why I put them in here so no particular order this is not a ranking that would be too hard my, my mental capacity could not handle that but they are in alphabetical order based off of the brand name and I might have a couple honorable mentions towards the end but let's get into it. the first one this is a pretty new one but I already know it's one of my favorite palettes especially in the purple family I've been talking a lot about purple palettes lately because I just did a top five purple palettes video and I know you saw this coming the ABH Norvina palette volume 5 I mean she came out of nowhere with this and thank goodness because ABH needed this and it was a bomb palette so it's a giant palette and I know big palettes are a little bit off-putting to some of you guys because it's a giant palette but for me you know I like big palettes I don't leave my house I stay in my room so for me I love all the options that this gives me and it really is a perfectly curated purple palette if you ask me not only is it a true purple palette it contains so many different tones and color stories of purples we have lilacs we have really vibrant purples there's a couple eggplants in here and all of the different textures I'm in love with and most importantly I think the quality in here is so good it's one of ABH's best formula overall I mean it's a brand new palette and I didn't really want to put brand new palettes in here because I haven't really gotten to use or dig into them get into the nitty-gritty of every single shade however this is one that I made an exception for because I know it's one of my favorite palettes that launched this year so I keep harping on this palette I keep bringing it up in videos because it's just that good if you like purples I don't think you'll regret it it's expensive it's a lot to pay at once yes but you get so many options and I really enjoy it <laughs> this second one came out of nowhere wasn't expecting for it to be in this video as I was looking through my list of palettes I was like oh my gosh that's actually one of my most used palettes and it actually is on sale right now for a ridiculously crazy price. You guys know my love affair with BH Cosmetics. In my opinion they have the best most affordable eyeshadow palette formula and they came out with a holiday palette. So this came out in the holidays of last year but I tried it this year and I had to mention it because it's on sale on BH's website for like $15 which is 
insane and I love this palette so much. So it's a holiday palette. It's not the newest, but it has some of the best colors. If you are looking for a palette that is going to allow you to play, maybe you don't have the most colors in your collection, but you still want, you know, some colors that you'd feel comfortable with, this is the way to go. It has so many directions with color stories that you can go. You can go neutral, you can go red, you can go green, you can go purple, you can go warm toned. There are so many options with this. And this is another really large palette. I really like large palettes. I know everybody's loving the small palettes right now and I do love the small palettes also. I just love all palettes, so big or small, I like them. Um, for me, I feel like this has so many great different color stories. It's really inspiring and the formula, so good. $15. Uh-uh. This palette is worth like $50. So if this has some colors that are of interest to you, if you think you would use it, you can't go wrong with $15. Really great quality. And not only that, but I used it a lot, especially in the beginning of this year. I had to put it away because I just kept grabbing for it. Just for example, uh, the shimmers here have so much texture. There's a couple pressed glitters in here. Um, If you're not a fan of that, just be aware. There's two right here, but I'll... I'll dip in one from time to time. Not proud of it, but I will. And there's also this kind of duochrome shade right here, which is so stunning. And I know green tones are very in. They have some of the best, most pretty easy to use green tones without having to break the bank. The shimmers are so wet. So not only, you know, is this just a fabulous deal, but in general, it's just a fabulous palette that I was using constantly and had to put it away. So I definitely would recommend getting your hands on that before it officially like goes out of stock. Because I imagine since it is a holiday palette that they're not bringing it back. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but it's called the BH Naughty palette. Okay, we are moving on to a ColourPop palette. I feel like I've recently talked about all of these palettes because, I mean, I guess that means I really like them if they're still continuing to pop up in videos. But if you haven't listened to me when I said you need the ColourPop Limoncello palette. What are you doing? This is one of the best palettes I have ever tried from ColourPop and the color story is just beautiful. Now this popped up in my top 10 summer palettes video. Don't know if that's up yet or not. If it's not, you just got a sneak peek. But I just love the way that this color story is. You can get warm tones. There's a fun green pop, a fun blue pop. You can do just so much for summer, but not only just for summer, for every day. I feel like these are all tones that so many people would feel comfortable with and the quality on this seems to be a bit better than the normal ColourPop quality and I normally like I like the ColourPop quality I don't think it's an amazing formula but you're not paying an arm and a leg so I think it's fine for what you pay for but the quality in here seems a little bit better to me and also the packaging is just so beautiful to look at and these are just tones that I feel very comfortable with every time I've used this palette I've absolutely loved the look that I came up with. ColourPop comes out with so many palettes, so the fact that this one stood out to me should say a lot. The next palette that I have, I am kicking myself because I forgot to mention this in my purple palettes video. It is so good. Dior this year and last year, they stepped up their eyeshadow formula. They redid the formulations of their quince and they are spectacular and unfortunately I do not think you are able to get your hands on this anymore but it really was one of my favorites this year. I did put it away for a little bit and that's how I forgot to mention it in my top five purple palettes but this one I think would replace the color pop if I had to be mean and do that. This is the pink sakura quint from Dior. Like I said, I do not believe it's available, but if it is, I will put a link in the description box down below. And again, it's just a luxury eyeshadow palette. The formulas might not absolutely amaze you, but the it takes a certain taste to really appreciate a true luxury formula. If you have mature skin, you're going to love this. The purples are so easy to work with. They blend out like a dream. And this is curated in a way that it's not an obnoxious purple. It's a very sophisticated purple look. And I love it. I love the quality of it. And it really was, in my opinion, one of the best palettes to come out this year. While it was a little bit underrated, in my, in my opinion, and I also counted it as pretty underrated because because I didn't talk about it too much on my channel. It really was just a solid palette to have. If I wanted a more sophisticated, elegant kind of purple look, 
really great. And in general, I think you should look into the permanent line of the Dior quince because they are fabulous. Do be wary though of their limited edition quince because those can be hit or miss. I had a few that were not very good this year. But I think if you stay in their permanent line, you will really enjoy the formulations and color stories. We're moving in to the next brand, which is Natasha Denona. Natasha Denona gets no sleep. She stays coming out with palettes, but there are two that I want to mention. She came out with one this year that I wasn't too crazy about, and we will talk about that in a later video, but let's start off with the one that I am currently wearing. I almost forgot about this one. Not quite, but as soon as I was thinking and brainstorming of what palettes I wanted to include in this video, I was like, oh yeah, I was obsessed with this. This is really bomb. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Love Palette. I love this palette. It is such good quality and I like pinks and purples so this is pretty much the only color story that I need and I did a really simple look today. I used this on the crease. I used this in the outer half in the outer V of my eye and then I finished off with this shimmery pink pretty much all over the lid. I'm pretty sure I've probably done this look before because you are only limited to five shades and by the way this is my inner corner color but it's just so good if you want to add some pink and purple to your collection but you don't want to break the bank but you're still looking for quality this is the best way to go about it it's 25 bucks the formulation is in line with her regular big palettes it's just as good so easy to work with and you have the color story curated for you so the look is already done for you i love this look i think it's so pretty it's Maybe not sophisticated. I have some crazy lashes on, but this is a really good one. And because it's pink and purple, is probably why it was included in this video because I only love one color story apparently, but it's so good. The other Natasha Denona palette that I wanted to mention, really a surprise to me in my review. I was lukewarm about it. I love the quality of it, but the color story, I was like, I do not foresee myself using this palette a lot. And boy, was I wrong? Even though I didn't wear a ton of makeup so far this year, that made when I applied makeup that much more special to me. So I actually found that when I would wear makeup, a lot of times I'd be a little bit more experimental. And let me tell you, I've had a lot of fun with the Natasha Denona Circle Logo Palette. I just did a couple videos talking about this. My top 10 summer palettes as well as a get ready with me doing a fun look for pride. This has been so inspiring to me and when I look at it, it certainly is not a palette that I'm attracted to but the quality is superb in here and I don't know what it, what's been going on in my life that I've been wanting to grab for this palette but I just have the cohesion of the color story that you wouldn't expect is so fun. I've created so many different looks. Every look looks so different and I feel like there's hundreds of other looks that I could create. Now I don't recommend this palette for everybody because I mean you're probably not going to use it if you don't think you're going to use it but I will say I was very surprised by this. I've ended up using it a lot which is crazy and the quality. I mean don't get me started with that. Yeah I'm surprised it's in this video but I that's it's where it landed. I had to talk about it. The next palette is another fun, colorful one, but the looks weren't necessarily bright and colorful. They were more so galactic and about the shift, and that has to go to the Odin's Eye Norn's Eyeshadow Palette. This is such a fun palette. The quality is really great. The price is right, and when I first saw this, while I thought it was very pretty, I wasn't too sure about it. I just didn't think, for me, it would be a good palette. Now, Odin's Eye typically does a very good job with their quality. They're an up-and-coming brand for sure, and this year they really stepped it up. The palettes that they came out with, the collections that they came out with, incredible. I'm really excited to see what this brand has in store for us, but this palette ended up being one of the most beautiful palettes. So unexpected. So when I look at the color story, I'm not so into it, but when I apply the shades to the eyes, particularly the shimmers in here, the looks that I get, mouth-watering. I don't, like these bottom shades right here in particular, they just take a look from this all the way up to that. Just, they make any look super nice. So again, 
I don't think this is going to be a palette for everybody, but I have to say, comparing it to all of the other palettes that came out this year, it's exciting, it's great quality, it's unique, and so for that, I had to put it in this video. Okay, we have one Pat palette. I'm curious as to when Pat's gonna come out with another Mothership palette. It's been a while, I'm ready, but she did come out with a bomb quad recently, and I did not, again, expect this to be in this video, because in my review, I said it was beautiful quality, but nothing to write home about. Man, was I wrong. This is the Venus and Fleurs Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. This just came out with her blush collection. And these eyeshadows, you know, they got overshadowed by the blushes. But every time I use this palette, I'm obsessed with the look. It's a simple four color quad, but the quality is so buttery, creamy, pigmented. The shimmers are so sparkly and beautiful. I've loved every single look that I've come up with. It's only four shades, but I feel like every single look looks different and beautiful. And I think this one snuck up on me because the quality is just so good i think i was like eh, at first because it was a quad with kind of normal colors nothing crazy to write home about and then i started actually applying them to my eyes doing different looks and i was like yeah the quality in here it's undeniable this is a great palette and i've really been enjoying it a lot lately number nine another palette that i've been mentioning recently and it's being featured in this video for two reasons the inspiration that I feel when I have it in my hands and the quality and that has to go to the Shroud Cosmetics It's Freaking Bats palette. I don't know, I am I love this palette. I think it is so unique in color story. Betty Jean just, I mean, I would love to see her do another collab just to see what kind of color story she would come up with. I had never tried Shroud Cosmetics previously, but man, was this a good introduction. I think the quality of these shadows are amazing. These are harder to work with shades, and I've been able to make them work very easily. They are extremely pigmented to use a light hand and be very careful, but I don't know. I just really love this palette. I've used it a handful of times now. I still want to use it some more. Fairly new in my collection, but this evoked something in me that a lot of the palettes that have come out now haven't. And for my last and final palette, I had to do it. It's not necessarily one that I personally use on myself a lot, but it is my most used palette in my makeup kit, which is the Vizzy Art Grande Pro palette. This is the 1X. So they launched this year a new version. It's supposed to be new and improved. You can see mine is starting to see some use here. We have a little bit of indentations, looking a little bit not as fresh as it once did. I will say the older version I think I liked better because there were a couple shades in there that I used frequently that are not in this palette. But other than that, this is just fine. As you can see, I definitely stick to these top two rows. These bottom three rows don't get used too terribly much by me, uh, but I love this palette. The quality is so easy to use, so easy to blend, and I feel like that's so important when you do makeup on others because everybody's eyelid is so different. So it's important to find a formula that's going to be versatile on all ages, and I feel like this one is a foolproof formula for all skin types, all ages. So I really love this. And I get asked a lot to do some like client tutorials and stuff and I do want to dip into that but at this point like I don't talk too much about my makeup artistry just because I feel like I'm still learning I'm not an expert there's a lot of areas in my skill set that I do want to work on before I start educating others in that realm I can only speak for myself really in my reviews and how they apply on me because I do feel like I have the expertise in that but as far as application on others makeup artistry education I'm still not quite comfortable with that so I've just had a lot of requests recently about that because I've been posting my work on Instagram more but I did want to let you know that's why I'm hesitant last thing for this video I did want to give an honorable mention because I really didn't feel comfortable putting this in today's video as the main top 10 because it's new I feel like it's a palette that I'm going to use a lot but it hasn't had the opportunity to be used a lot so I did want to give an honorable mention to the Patrick Ta major dimension eyeshadow palette it's so boring as well that's also why I didn't want to put it in because I know we all have these colors but I just think the aesthetic of it is gorgeous and I can foresee this in the next few months being used a lot by me especially when I'm just running out the door or looking for a neutral 
Glow Glam Eyeshadow. This is one that I'm going to go to. So far, I've really enjoyed the formula of this. So while it hasn't been used a ton by me, and I do want to give it some more trial and error before I put it in any top favorite eyeshadow palettes video, I did want to share with you that I think it's on its way. Also, a minor shout out. Let me grab it. I'm still working on these palettes, so I don't have any other looks yet, but a minor shout out to Quintessence from the Sydney Grace and Tim Talia collaboration. This palette is everything. I think the collection as a whole, it was a bit repetitive, but the palette, this one in particular, which is the only one that I've used individually, is incredible. I don't want to talk about it too much. If you want more detail on this and you want to see why I love it so much, check out my most recent Swatch and Sip where I swatched the whole collection, sip some coffee, and play with these palettes. It's like the formulation in here, unbeatable. And then, of course, the colors Temptalia chose on top of that. Like, I can see this being in this video at the end of the year. There we have it. There we are. Those were my top 10 palettes so far in 2021. I'm really excited to see what other palettes launch this year because quite honestly, taking a step back, I was a little bit underwhelmed with palette launches thus far. So I hope these brands can put together some palettes for me. Yeah. All right. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.